selfless inference of leadership in the 21st century. Can anybody tell me something striking about the topic? Does anybody find the topic striking? What's, can I have two people tell me what their thoughts are? What intrigues me is the, the topic sounds as women limiting themselves. And that, that is so intriguing to me. Okay. Any, any other thoughts? The, the topic criticizes women. <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't really need to say much about what women face in the industry. Because here we are trying to talk about women issues. And the topic that I'm given actually seems to say, you women are doing something wrong. You are limiting yourself. You know, and we have to always start from this point. You know. In my view, and I think a lot of people show, and I'm happy that the, the thoughts actually came from the men, that the issues women face in leadership are very far from self-limiting. They, they go beyond self-limiting. In fact, there are very few things that we do ourselves to limit ourselves in leadership. Most of the things that we face are either societal or corporate. Culturally, I'm not sure why this thing keeps We have two things that we usually face with. Um, we'll get to the self-limiting issues later, if they are in. But society itself puts some limits on us. Even social policy, even when we try to protect women, we tend to, to restrict women to certain boxes. So if you look at social policy, for example, and when it comes to maternity leave, you see that our labor laws make provision for maternity leave, which is a very good thing. But they will make no provision for paternity leave. And why? Because generally, culturally, we believe that it is the woman's responsibility to take care of the child. So, in being generous, you say women can have six months maternity leave or three months maternity leave. But we don't even consider the men. So, Right from the onset, the woman's place as being the caretaker of the home, caretaker of the child. You know, and when a man asks for paternity leave, his colleagues will look at him in a friendly way. I mean, what do you want paternity leave? And if you would do paternity leave just to show that they are more than men, and what would they do? They go home for two days. Most of the time, they won't be spending time with their wife to take care of the baby. They are just home, just for everybody to know that we have a baby. You know, so it is, it is the woman who, who is seen as the one to take care of, 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 the, of the child. And so our policies are done that way. Our laws are passed that way. So we start from that point. And when we, we have, um, when something happens at home, for example, and there's a crisis at home, it's okay for the woman to interrupt her career. It's okay for the woman to um, stop going to school, to solve the issue at home. The man cannot be seen as doing that. I have a, um, a recent experience where I, have, I lost my parents this year, but um, prior to that, they were ill. You know, and I'm a very busy person, but none of my brothers, and I'm a but none of my brothers was willing to take time off work to take them to the hospital. Anytime they have to go to the hospital, it had to be me. And I'm sure even if my brothers were the ones taking my parents to the hospital, everybody would be questioning that where's your sister? You know, everybody will question where's your sister? Why is she not the one bringing your mom to the hospital? So that is what we are faced with as women in, in society. So when it comes to even career development, we are unable to do certain things, or we don't have the freedom to do the things that 
learn to naturally. You know, for, if you have to do it as a woman, you have to explain yourself. Or you have to decide that you are going to go against the odds and you, you're not going to mind anybody. When it comes to the public world, it even gets worse. And especially even with the industries like mining, where it is predominant in you. You know, you find yourself in a labyrinth of old boys' network. First of all, very few men enter the profession anyway. And the men tend to naturally protect themselves. So before you even break that barrier, that it takes a lot. You must be very outstanding, and even when you are outstanding, well, the question is how did this woman get there? She must be sleeping with somebody. You know, like women are called all sorts of names just because they get to the top. You know, and then even when you manage to probably get to a manager's level or even in the mining industry, like a superintendent's level or something, beyond a certain point, you are just unable to go any further. Why? Because you don't even know what the rules are to go further. Um, you, you don't even hear about the opportunities. By the time you hear the opportunity, it's already been filled by a man. You know, and it just gets more and more complicated. You know? And then, of course, the, per um, the perceptions that we are faced with. Um, if a man speaks a lot, um, he is described as eloquent. You know, if the woman does, oh, this woman speaks too much. She's too chatty. She's not serious. You know, um, if the woman is serious and takes her work seriously, because if she doesn't take her work seriously, she's never going to get the promotion. They're going to say, ah. Iron Lady, um, um, Mary Jata, um, you get all sorts of names, you know, and there's also the difficulty, I mean, men tend to, after work, hang out, you know, drink a beer, it's at that point that they discuss all the opportunities, but the woman can't do that, you have to run back home, and if you did that, then you, if you were always hanging with the men and drinking, as a woman in our society, you'll be described as a slut. You know, and when the promotion comes, they will only say that ah, it's only because he's always drinking with the men. So we find ourselves in a very, very difficult situation. You know? And then, in most organizations, when a woman is finally given a position, most of the time it's to meet a target. So it is, it is to color, oh, there are too many men here, and um, we should have a woman amongst us. You know, and unfortunately, I, I'm in an industry where it's predominantly male. So you, and they don't mean harm. They call you, ah, Juliet, we are going somewhere. We don't have any man. Can you join us? And I'm saying, and I keep telling, no, I won't be used as decoration. If I'm going, then I'm going because you need me. If not, I'm not going with you. But, but that's, what, that's where we find ourselves. You know, and, and it is genuinely a very, very difficult situation. For, for most women, and it's difficult to break through. So with all of these, what do women do? Uh, women tend to internalize and rationalize things and accept the status quo. Um, I, I, when you complain, your mother is likely to say, well, I, you have even done better than me. I would never got to your level. You know, why are you being so ambitious? Your father will probably advise you the same way. Your brothers would say, you, you just get that from everyone. You know, so you tend to rationalize if you get a, an opportunity for an interview or something and they don't take you, even though you know that you've done very well and you've done better than most of your male counterparts, you tend to accept that, well, they didn't give it to you because um, you didn't do so well. And you tend to accept the status quo. Um, sometimes we just tend to avoid certain careers, you know, so um, they'll tell you um, geology, and then you say, ah, I can't, for example, I can't go underground. It's too tough. Um, there are only men there. So you'd rather read management so that you can be in the office. Or maybe the furthest or the most difficult subjects we'll choose will be accounting or something. We avoid these careers just so that we can fit in. Um, and then. Most often, actually, and this is the most common choice, we just tend to leave. 
we live in many ways. First, we either resign from a position after you've held on for so long and your promotion is not coming. You just say, um, well, that's it. I'm looking for another opportunity and I leave. Some people might just say, well, um, I'll stay here and say that, look, you guys are discriminating against me, which is very rare because you already would create an environment that you won't be able to survive in. And most people will just remain silent and work, um, especially if you work in an industry that pays well and it's not very easy to find an alternative. You probably will just stay on silently and work. Or some would remain at the position and raise awareness on discrimination, which is um, statistics have shown that um, that's an option that women, most women don't take. Mostly they'll just walk away if they... And then one of the things that we also tend to face, especially at the very senior, at the very top, um, CEOs and other things, that we tend to appoint women when there's a crisis. And statistics have shown that women are better handlers of crisis. So we tend to appoint a woman when there's a crisis. And then when you appoint a woman, sometimes you get a lot more sympathy with the public. You know, they are not as hard. So when there's a crisis, then you start looking for that woman who could occupy the higher position. But because there's a crisis, she tends to work herself harder. And she, she just can't get it well done enough. And then you burn out. And then when you burn out, then you fail. And then the stereotype uh, well, we told you the woman can't do it, you know, and some statistics have also shown that when women have stabilized things, we tend to bring back the male CEO who takes all the glory because suddenly you find, oh, this woman is not good enough. So the, the issues that women face are very far from self-limiting. There is some role that we can play, but the external factors are a lot more than what we bring to the table when it comes to limiting ourselves in leadership. Um, so the question is, what should we all do to help women? And I have always said that businesses should take women issues more seriously and stop treating it as a jargon and stop treating it as meeting a target. It, it, is, it is more serious than fashionable. It's, it's not fashionable to say that we are gender inclusive or we are a diversified company. Women bring a lot to the table and if you, if you have women at the table, statistics have shown that women increase revenue a lot more at, at a senior management level and there's no reason why women can't do it at even a higher level. So addressing women issues should not be a fashionable thing where we talk about it. And what I tend to see is that any time there's a woman's issue to be discussed, that is the only time that we remember women in the industry and call them to come and speak. When I was called to do this, my first reaction is, I don't like speaking on women issues. And it is not because I don't care about women issues, but I don't want to repeat the stereotype that women only talk about women issues. There's so much women do in other industries and mining and other things. I've been involved in serious business with Anglo Gold Ashanti that I can speak about. You, and, and we bring a lot of value to, to the table. So it's, it's not just enough that when you're having a conference, you need to show that some two or one woman has spoken at this conference and that we are balanced. It should be, it should be more deliberate. It should be more pushing what women can actually do. So if there's a woman engineer who can discuss nuclear power, let that woman come. So that people actually see that women can do nuclear power and that it's not someone who is unrelated talking about what women can do. If we do that, then it won't become cliche anymore. It becomes reality and we live it. The other thing that I would also say is that for us women, 
when there's an opportunity, you should step up. You know, we tend to, again, and it's a chicken and egg situation, we tend to use our family as, as an excuse not to take on something. You know, so something comes up at work, there's a project, they are looking for people to work on it. The men will, they won't even think, they won't remember they have a wife, they won't remember they have a child. All they want is to be on the project and whatever it takes, they will do it. You know, but the woman will say, oh, this means I'll stay late at work. I can't leave my children. You know, my, um, one of the most important things that moved me from just being a management member to be a significant management member in Anglo came at the most inconvenient time to me. I just had a baby. I was on maternity leave. We had a new boss who was coming to do a project and she said, I want Juliet on this project. And I came back from maternity leave. But that single project catapulted me to the front because here I was dealing with people in South Africa, dealing with everybody. And then they suddenly realized that this lady actually can bring something to the table. At that point, I could have said, I'm on maternity leave. I can't make it. Find somebody else. You know, but a man will never give that excuse. The man will come back. You know, but we women tend to find, you know, I immediately, and I had my mom there, but bless her. So she took care of my child whilst I moved. And I never closed work at 3 or 12 o'clock or whatever as was supposed to be. I never did because that project was critical. You know, but because I stood up at that time, I was considered. My boss was there. He could have done that job. But then they called me and I, I said, yes, I'll do it. You know, and that is the attitude we need to take. And then we need to tell ourselves that you can do it. You know, sometimes because of all the societal pressures and all the stereotypes that we face, we don't even see the opportunity. I recently put up myself for something that was quite interesting. Um, but I did it on the spur of the moment. You know, I, just, I was just talking to one of my colleagues and I was like, why don't you appoint me into this role? And I was joking. I, I really wasn't even thinking about it. I was just being silly when I, when I said that. But after I said that, I was like, but you know what? I think I can do it. You know, and he said, yes, I think you can do it. You know, so I applied. And they were like, oh. And everybody I told was like, yeah, yeah, actually, you th I think you can do this. You know, and I was shortlisted. And there I was. I mean, we haven't gotten to the final end. But when I was thinking about it, I was actually joking, it was, I didn't think of, I mean, it was just flippant, so I just made a flippant comment, why don't you make me this person? They said, actually, I think you can do it. And there I was, and I was pleasantly surprised that I was actually shortlisted, you know. At least I gave somebody something to think about, even if you don't get it, you know. So we always have to step up when, when the opportunity presents itself, you know. And then you must find a role model. That's easier. With a role model, you don't even need to have a contact with the person. There's so many women who have done it um, in Ghana, outside Ghana, in America. You could just say, I, w I like this trait in this person, and just model yourself after that person. And then you could also find a mentor. That is actually a lot more difficult to get because it's more formalized. But your mentor need not be a woman, you know, because... Um, whether we like it or not, the men hold the power, at least as at now. So it's good to have a male mentor who can hold your hand and bring you up. But when you get up there, don't forget to bring other people up. Because that's what we tend to do. As soon as we get to the top, we tend to think that I got there by myself. And I got there because I'm more hardworking than the others. Most of the time, we get there because somebody gave us an opportunity. And then you should remember to give somebody else the opportunity. And then you should self-develop yourself. Don't wait for your boss to say, go on this training before you go on training. You know, look out for courses. Read. There's so much information on the internet. 
you know, instead of spending time on Facebook and all of that, just read and don't develop yourself so that when you are engaged in discussions, you can make logical and valuable contribution to any discussion and then you'll be noticed. And then as women especially, you need to, we need to instill the culture in, in our children, you know, especially our sons, you know, for them to start from a very young age, let, uh, let your sons know that the woman is equal, that the woman is important. One, once we do that, because the man is at this moment advantaged, yeah? So your son is more likely to get to a certain position before your daughter. But if you've brought up your son well, when he gets to the position, you look out for your daughter. So it's very important how we bring, our, um, bring up our children, especially our sons, and also for our daughters, let them know that they can do it. And I think we always have to tell ourselves that we can do it, always. You know, once you have that, there is no opportunity that comes your way that you will not be able to take advantage of. Thank you very much.